to record our first cue list, the first thing we need to do is make sure we have a show file loaded. So I'm going to go up here to this main menu, go to load. And then if you have a show file already in the console, it's going to show up here on shows so we can double click it. If not, you can go over here to USB and select a file off of your USB drive. Make sure your USB drive is plugged into the data port if you have an LS1. On the LS core, there's only one USB port, so use that one. Double click to select the show and it's loaded. Perfect. Now the first thing we're going to do is select some fixtures via a group. I'm going to select this first auto group here, and then I'm going to go ahead and press the find key. This is on the screen right here, and it's also on the console below the LCD screen. Perfect. Now the console finds them, turns them on, and brings them to a standard position. Let's go ahead and go to palettes and select a color. I'll select this nice green. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and record it. We'll press the record button. Notice that the clear button is illuminated. That lets us know that we've done something in our programmer. And now we can press record. We'll then press the fader we want it to go to. I'm going to click this first one right here. And if you are on an LS1, you can also press the numbered key above the fader. Perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a second queue. This time, I'm going to change the color via the parameters instead of the palettes. While it's usually a good idea to use the palettes, you can also access the parameters here. If there are more parameters for the given type, you're going to be able to scroll down by clicking and dragging here. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and just bring in some red. You can see here it's adding that red in on our stage. Make a nice amber there. And you can see you can actually click and drag on these parameters as well as use the parameter wheels if you have an LS1. Perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead to effects, to position, and build a tilt effect. So we'll grab this nice tilt wave here. We can see it happening now in our visualizer. And let's go ahead and change some of the parameters of the effect. So I'm going to choose one of these different forms and then go ahead and adjust the size. Now, the effect size is how far off the base point that the fixtures are gonna tilt. So for this example, I'm gonna drag that way up and we can now see that our fixtures are using their full tilt range. Similarly, if I drag it very small, they only move a little bit. So I'm just gonna choose something that looks nice. Now we have our effect speed, which controls the speed of the effect. So as I bring that up, it gets very fast. As I slow that down, it gets very slow. And then we've got our effects offset. Our offset is how the fanning of the fixtures works. So it's do the fixtures all run at the same time or do they kind of feather out or fan the effect? You see, I drag that to zero. They all do the effect at the exact same time. And as I drag that number higher, the fixtures get spread apart further and further. So just dial that into something that looks nice. Perfect. And now we'll go ahead and record this as a second cue. Press and record again. We'll press on that first cue list that we already recorded. Excellent. Now we can see that there's a two, which means there's a second cue right there in that cue list. Perfect. Now let's see what we recorded. So I'm going to press clear to clear out my programmer. And then I'm going to bring up my fader here. So I can actually do that right here on where it says zero. And you see this value, I can double click on it and set a manual value. Or I can click on it and get a graphical fader right here. Now when I first bring that fader up, it's going to execute the first queue and then the second. Perfect. Now I can also control my fader here on the LS1 physical fader itself. We have various options here to be able to skip through the cues, play, pause, and stop to release our cue list. In here, we can go to the cue list options, and we're able to control a number of things. First, we've got our playback options. 
For each playback, you can set these options differently. So for example, this one says fader controls HTP channels, and that's set to default so that the faders are controlling intensity. But you can also set the fader to control LTP channels, which controls other parameters such as color, tilt, or movement. Perfect. Now, you can click on these on the PC, or if you're on a tablet or phone, you actually drag these to turn them on and off. Fader controls effect speed, allows you to control the speed of the effect as you bring the fader up and down. So when it's down, the effect is very slow, and when it's up, it's at its full speed. And fader controls effect size, allows you to adjust the size of the effect with the fader. So much like the speed, when you have the fader down low, it's going to be a very small size of effect. And when you have it at full, it's going to be the size you recorded it at. It's worth noting that you can turn both of these on if you'd like, or you can just turn on one at a time. Next, we've got a priority. This determines what playback gets the output when there are multiple playbacks touching the same parameters. By default, they're set to one. Now in the trigger options, we can go ahead and see the actual triggering of the cues. So for example, by default, it's set that when you bring the fader up, the cue is going to play. And when you bring it down, it's going to release, but you can toggle these off. The trigger level here on the right determines at what percentage level, when you bring that fader up, it starts the cue. You may want to leave this at one or set it to a higher level if you sometimes accidentally trigger things. You can also set a playback to activate when the page changes, deactivate when pages change, and you can also lock to all pages. This means that it's an important fader that you'll see on every page of faders, no matter what page you go to. Perfect. Now we're going to go ahead. We'll just click on a separate fader here to hide that window. And we're going to double click on the top of this fader here. This brings us to the cue list window. Here in the cue list window, if we select our cue list, which it should be selected if we double clicked here first, we can see our two different cues here and that they're set to chase mode. Now inside of Lightshark, there's chase mode and step mode. Chase mode, as we can see in the visualizer here, bumps through our two cues in rapid succession. And we can also see that on the screen here, how we're fading right between them very quickly. On the other hand, step mode, which we can activate by first stopping our cue list and then clicking here, has a waiting period, and then it crossfades the cues in. In the next video, we'll talk more about these different modes and how to modify your cues in this window.